Bye. Go technology. All right. So yeah, let's do some weaving Wednesdays here. Sarah, can you uh, introduce yourself and then uh, let's, if, while you're doing your intro, actually, we're not going to do that first. If you want to weave along with us, we're going to do a simple project. Sarah, how long do you think this is going to take? Well, if we don't finish today, then we can just pick it up next Wednesday. Okay. We're so if you want, go you can grab a book or a board, right? Yeah. So here's my book that I have. It's, you know, it's about 10 inches high. So, you know, somewhere between a foot and six inches. Okay, cool. And then we have yarns, of course. I got some merino sock yarn, some random merino sock yarns. And then, oh, beautiful. And then I have a merino lace um, single ply. I think that'll be strong enough for what we're doing. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's what's great about this project is if you don't have these exact materials, you know, Nicole and I are just working with our stash, what we have around us. So exactly. I think anything goes, you know, um, when I was trying to collect what we were going to use today, I just picked up some of this um, thin cotton. Um, and I'm going to use that for the warp. That's what we're going to get started with. Um, but if you have something else, I think you've got something else, a lace weight merino, you said you're going to yeah. use for the warp. I so yeah, I think really anything goes. For I just won't wear it in the shower. That yeah, maybe just not wear it in the shower. Make it a little, a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll make it long enough and make it shorter. Off. That would be cute. There you go. So I think what yeah, we're going so to try doing is like having once a week, you know, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to do a little Wednesday weaving project and have fun. I'll put it up on the blog and you'll put it up on your blog too. So yeah, um, this is going to be fun. Just go grab some yarn. <laughs> yeah, so I know it's like putting people on the spot to join with us, but you know, Go ahead and just, um, you know, grab your stash. And if you're a lot of people are saying they're like totally into stash busting projects. So, oh, good. <laughs> I'm your girl. I'm actually working on another project where I just, I have so much random ribbon from Darn Good Yarn because, like, I own the company and <laughs> I'm making this really cool, like, wall hanging. So, once that's done, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll do that on a Wednesday. Yeah. All right. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get started in on the project. So hi, I'm Sarah Boink, and I'm the founder of Sis Handmade, and it's all about weaving and tapestry weaving, and you know, getting into your groove with weaving. So you'll you'll see. You, I'll give you a little bits and pieces as we move forward with this. But um, you know, for me, weaving has really helped me throughout my life, and has been part of my life and part of my ancestry. ancestry and yeah. I think it's often overlooked. Weaving is an overlooked art form. And I think, you know, we have to elevate this art form. It's, it's all around the world. It's like music. You know, exactly. it's just a language that anyone can speak and anyone can do. And it's the most simple thing, but it's the most complex thing the more you get into it. So it's a little bit of both. And you got complimented on your glasses too. Your glasses suit you great. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't know Thank if you. you can see, sometimes other people can see the comments and they, and they can't, so. Oh, that's true. Yes, thank um, everybody who's joining in. And I love, you know, with when you teach classes, because I took a class with you once um, outside of Albany, and it's not super contrived. Like, I think, you know, you can, we can get super technical, sure, but that's not what this is really about. I think this is more just having fun doing, like, a fun little craft project, letting yourself have fun. But you also have a kit on our website that's a circular loom, and you yes. actually infuse a... Um, you infuse it with essential oil, which is fantastic. And then you also get to put a crystal in it. And then you've worked in yarn around that. I actually have mine hanging up in my car, but we sell kits on the site and they said, we put them up and they sell out within a couple, like a couple hours. Yeah. That's really fun. I mean, if, if you don't want to do weaving for the rest of your life, um, it's just a fun project to do with your friends. And it's a really great way to set an intention for yourself or for your friend or a loved one. All right, let's, yeah, so let's get started. Here to say hi. So what up, Willie? Saw you there, buddy. Um, all right, so tell us what to do first. <laughs> so everybody, so listen, you know, warping the, the loom is probably the most complicated part of this, but it's actually pretty easy. I know I keep saying it's complicated and easy, but you'll see with, in a minute. So you're just gonna grab your book or your board and you're gonna grab the yarn that you're gonna use for your warp. Oh, I lost you there. So does anyone else, do they craft and do these and then they lose a little bit? Your uh, stuff. There we go. Here's my book. And I'm going to go ahead and open my book. Or if you're using a board, get some tape. 
and tape it on the back of the board. You did not tell me to get tape, but just so you I know, I didn't know I you were going to I always have washi tape in my craft, <laughs> in, my, in my desk drawer. So just, you know, put it in your book like that and close it, and you don't even need tape. And I know everybody has books. If you don't have a book, go to the library and get a book and just use it for this project. <laughs> so you're just gonna go like that. And you know, what I'm doing is I'm kind of like pinching the book a little bit so it won't fall out. And then what you're gonna do is you wrap the yarn around the book. It's really that simple. Okay. And so how far I was apart should I be, how far apart should I put the warp threads? What you want to make sure is that when you're doing it, it can be as close. Can you see that? It can be really, really close. Okay. okay. But you don't want to overlap it. So I would do just a little bit tiny space just to make sure you're not overlapping it. That makes sense. And we could always adjust it afterwards. Okay. And you want when you're doing this to be like I said, I was going to make mine a choker, but I want this to be the give or take the length of what I want the finished product to be or less than. If like you it want around too, you have all this extra on the back too that we can use later on if we want to tie a bow. Like you were saying earlier that you wanted to be able to take this off before you go in the shower. Okay, so people wrap are it all the way around on both sides. People are asking loose or tight. Now that's the part that neither you want, you want to make sure it's pretty tight, but not so tight that you're not going to be able to weave later on. So you want it to have a little bit of a give, a little bit of a bounce, but don't pull the fibers so they actually change their shape. You want to keep the fibers so they're maintaining their sh same shape. So there's a little bit of spring in the step. It's so a feel, it's awesome. hard to tell. It's a, it's a feel. Um, so you can see it's pretty tight. You don't want it to be loose. If anything, I would err on the tighter side. It's just that if you're, especially if you're dealing with like fibers that tend to stretch. So like, um, and like don't really have a lot of memory, like silk. I wouldn't necessarily use silk for a warp, but if you were using it for like a, maybe a small bookmark or something, um, that will tend to lose its memory if it, as it keeps getting pulled and over and under um, where, um, uh, where capital you cupcake. capital cupcake cutie said tight on the edge loose in the middle hey that's a really good tip I had never thought of it that way you certainly do want the edges to be nice and tight so yeah so we're, we're, making, gonna... um, we're making a friendship bracelet that's what if people are asking mm -hmm. all right so after we get as many warp threads as we want what's the next yeah. So I would get, I'm going to do about 13 and I would suggest that you do an odd number because I know it sounds different, but when you do an odd number, then there's more symmetry on the edges. When you have warps, when there's an even amount of warps, you're actually going to be alternating on the edges. One will be under and one will be over in a different way. So if you do... On How amount. wide is this going to be? So 13 seems like, I'm counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How it wide depends is on your yarn. Oh. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, let's do seven. I like seven better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to go okay. around seven times. And now before, and then you cut it, let's um, go ahead and just cut it a little bit. Cut the other end off. And this is, see now mine's not really even yet. I like mine to be even, so I'm just going to adjust it ever so slightly. See, I'm kind of adjusting it okay. now. And I would encourage people to spend time on their warp because the setup is very important. I know we're just doing a friendship bracelet today, but when you get the setup right, everything goes so much smoother down the road. I'm the worst crafter in the world, which I know is terrible considering what I do for a living. And I just always go for it, which is probably why all my finished projects look like shit. I don't know about that. I think you're being hard on yourself. I don't so know. Really, I guess we need more it. acceptance, right? So is this okay or should they be? Yeah, that's perfect. And so I'm just going to take that one that I tucked in. Remember before I opened up the book and tucked that one in? 
Okay. Yep. I have two, and then you, I'm basically just going to tie a knot in the back. So here's the back of the warp, the back side. Oh, okay. Yep, that's a great idea. Oh, I hope I still have you. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot. I don't know if I'm still alive. Hopefully Sarah comes back or it's just me. Um, I, I'm reading here. Um, I try to brute force my project sometimes too. Yeah, back. it's. I'm back. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, yeah, I, no, I'm, I, someone was just talking I, about brute forcing their projects and I, I think what happens, I have such, I think we all have really good intentions and then I just wind up drinking and then I'm like, I'll just throw a button or a decal or something on this and cover the mistakes. <laughs> I am literally the worst person for the job. <laughs> Well, I did kind of like I'm buying a, a pre-made like like this is someone um, a young lady who works in my warehouse. She made these. I'm like, I'm just gonna buy your ready like your pre-made handmade things because I can't be trusted. I mean, yeah, I mean, making things is it takes time. Absolutely. All right, so, so you like tie mine? It didn't tie as tight as I would have liked to, and now I'm gonna start start to separate these out just a tiny bit, just like yours. Because I want to try to match and match a little tiny bit. Oh, fun. So I'm just adjusting my warp so that they're all about. I'm already the same regretting my marina warp. warp. It looks like you had a on that, Nicole. So you're a step <laughs> ahead of me. So I don't know. You say you're horrible. I at think this, I lost but... you again, but that's okay. Um, Let's see. And really, that's the warp. Well, let's see. I, mean, we're I think much uh, done. while we're we wait for Sarah to, to come back, weaving um, in the weft with our other yarns, I have to adjust my phone because it keeps... <laughs> we're having terrible weather here today. And I know they say that. Um, I know they say that. I know they say that you weather can see doesn't. See me though, right? Me. Sorry, I'm just trying to invite Sarah back in. Uh, um, let's see here. Let me you know they say that. So they say it doesn't affect anything, but it does. It always affects. Um, it always affects the internet, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, I have to change my settings on my phone because they keep. Do you want me? We can turn off Zoom. You want to turn off Zoom? Turn off Zoom. Yeah, so it doesn't right. affect the bandwidth. I think it's more because what's happening is in a few seconds, it just automatically. If I'm not touching the screen, it thinks I'm not using my phone. Oh, that's funny. So I just have to change my settings. Okay. All right. Oh, here we go. All right. That's what it looks like. And now I have a couple things of yarn that I found. Like this is, um, I think it's alpaca and it's hand spun. I don't have a lot of it left, so I want to use that. I'm kind of obsessed right now, Nicole, with um, peach and green together. I love these colors. It's Those very nice. like um, Golden Girls of you. Golden Girls? <laughs> Yeah, like on the lanai. I felt like it was always like the peach and green, right? So as anyone else, come on. Someone needs to back me up here. I never, I have to look into this though. Come on. <laughs> now I'm going to, now I'm going to watch the Golden Girls. It's been a while, but I know there's a whole following of people that oh my God. love the Golden love Girls. It. I love it. So, okay. So I'm just going to cut, you know, you can really just cut any amount. I'm just going to do a amount that I'm comfortable with, which is like an arm's length. Oh, I'm like doing like seven arms lengths here. I'm glad you're like doing this with me. I feel like we're getting a private lesson for free. Thank you, Instagram. And then, you know, I'm going to use my darn good yarn tapestry needle. Yeah, I got the same one, but in, in pink. Yeah, you uh, see, Captain Cupcake Cutie is like, yeah, I'm all about loving that show. I binge watched Golden Girls. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to definitely want to see this pink, peach and green Golden Girls. I had no idea. <laughs> So then was it Golden Girls House had too much wicker? <laughs> now does does everybody know how to weave? Is there anybody here that you know doesn't has never done the over under over under? Um, but that's what we're really gonna do next. We're just gonna start taking our yarn or our tapestry needle. I like to use needles. If you want to use your hands, go ahead and use it. But we're just gonna pick like it's kind of like guitar strings in a way. You're gonna you're gonna go under, and then for the next one, you go over, and then you go under, and then you go over. 
so you're just doing the opposite and then you go over it. Yep. So yeah, it looks like that. And when you think of your yarn, think of it like a stink when you weave. You don't want to be too tight. The the yarn. What do I do with the tail? We're just gonna leave it for now. We're gonna keep this simple. We'll worry about that later. Just leave um just leave like four or five inches for now. So we have someone saying that they don't know how to weave, but they're just watching for now because they're at work. Yeah. So, you know, some of the other um, things that I learn when weaving, so this is uh, the back and forth. So you're just going over under, and then yeah. on the row going back, when you get to the end of the row, you're going to just do the opposite. Opposite, yep. But the key, one of the other keys is when you get to the end of the row is you don't want to pull going back the other way because then you're going to start to get this like pucker thing going on. Actually, I can show you a weaving that looks like shit, but you can see where I did not have tension. <laughs> and you know what? I know this. They teach you that in every single weaving class. And it's still, when you're new, that's what's going to happen. And it happens. And I've been weaving for qu quite a while. I still do that. I'm so don't be discouraged if your, your friendship bracelet kind of comes in um, as you weave. It's just a very normal thing. But if you think of the yarn like a snake, that's really helped me because then I don't want to pull too much. I think of it, it needs, it, the yarn needs room to wrap around each of the warp strings. Okay, I have an area of concern because my craft area is so messy. Do you guys want to see my craft area? It's like- Yeah, we want to see it. Okay. Like, I'm going to take this off. So this is it behind me. And actually, this is, that's the pansy. Like, this like, is, like, it's just bag of stuff that I'm looking for this weaving. Oh, wow. It's all out of control. It's all my rug yarn. I have no idea what this one weaving project is. I wanted to show you what not to do, but just trust me. Be nice to your edges, because then they get all puckery. That's, it's true. Oh. But if it, it happens, even when you, you mean it not to, so I wouldn't get discouraged too much. I really try. It's hard to spin the friendship bracelet. So there's my first one, and I'm going to go ahead and just do the opposite. So this time I'm going over and then under. It is kind of nice when you use a needle, I find, on the smaller projects because you can just pick very quickly at the, um, at the warp threads. And then I use the needle to comb down the, um, the fiber of the yarn as well. And push that down. Well, I know somebody said that they're at work and they're interested in weaving, and I would encourage you to do that. Even a little project like this, when I was working in an office nine to five, I would bring my weaving and take my give myself a 10 minute break, and it would completely rejuvenate me for the rest of the day. That's awesome. Now, do you know this trick where you go, you do your row? And you get it, so I have it, I have the, you know, I, I pick the warp threads and I'm going to, I pull it through. Yep. And then, so like right now, this is called tabby. This is like the basic over, yes. over. Um, Let me just get my, okay. So then from here, what you do is I do like a 40, almost like a 45, and then you draw it down. And then that yeah. helps you kind of do this like, bubbling of the yarn and that gives you like by pulling it up it gives it almost enough yarn to come down so that you're not pulling the warp threads in and that's been really yes it's really helped me uh, make a more consistent piece on the edges that's a great tip absolutely and you do want to think of it that way your yarn is going to stick out a little tiny bit on the edges and you want that Try not to be tempted to draw it in all the way in. You know, it's, it's funny. I just realized I grabbed my, my shittiest pair of scissors. There's like one pair of scissors that floats around my craft area, and I definitely used it on paper. And um, very disappointing. When you, Has anyone else like ruined their really good crafting shears or scissors? <laughs> Cutting paper. I have so many scissors. <laughs> I have a whole bag of scissors, but I, it reminds me, I remember my mother, she, she used to be a tailor. Mm -hmm. and she would have these special scissors just for her fabric. And I remember I grabbed them once to go to use it for just, you know, a piece of paper or something I needed to cut. And she yelled at me 
<laughs> so now I, I do it. Now I do it to my daughter. I'm like, oops. <laughs> it's a big deal. I'm like, my mom. I want to show you two on that technique I just showed. So I pull it up on the 45 and then Ooh. I pull down the tail like that. So it makes like a little arch and that's yeah. kind of the other part. So when you're bringing down your, um, your weft, you start from the middle and then you push it down and then you work towards the edges on each side as well. And that gives you kind of like a little bit of a bubbling effect and a little bit of texture as well. So you're not pulling it like straight tight every single row as well. And I find that that yes. settles out the yarn really nicely. Yeah, the, the, the yarn really does need to breathe between all the different warp strings. And I did hear one tapestry weaver refer to it as like the weft yarn is like a snake and it needs room. And that- I like that. Oh, we lost. Me. Did I go away again? Come back, Sarah. We got to fix your phone, huh? All right. So I'll keep going here. You know, I took a class. Right. I took an online class. There's so many good ones here. Uh, let me see if I can invite her back in. Um, I took an me? online class. I paid for it. It wasn't that expensive with um, connection reconnecting with Marianne Moody, she's um, an Australian-based. Um, she's an Australian-based fiber artist, and she specializes in weaving. She created a great book. Um, you can get it on Amazon, but I found I found her online course that you can just get through there, uh, through her online store. Really awesome. Uh, where I was talking about Marianne Moody, and she has a really great tutorial. Oh yes. I think I paid like maybe twenty-five, thirty-five dollars for it, and like you know. Oh. But it was like in two or three hours, it taught me like all the cool, funky things and how to set, set it up, how to finish it. And it just made me feel, I think, like a lot more secure to try out different, um, um, like different yarns as well. Because mm -hmm. I, I think like sometimes we wind up trying to be a little bit more safe. So it's the bomb. Yeah, so who, is there anybody that's weaving with us? I'm wondering, I'm like, trying to look at the comments. I bet next week if we put up, I think maybe we'll continue this. So if anyone wants to do this and then next week, same bat time, same bat channel, we'll yeah. continue this, our project. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, why don't we do that? I think maybe Nicole, we'll just set this aside, and then this. next week, if people want to pop in with us and leave with us, I love that idea. I'll set up my desk so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Look, I'm making a little bit of headway. How far? How, yes. How are you <laughs> oh, that looks great. We're doing awesome. So when you do this, like something basic like this, Sarah, do you do like other techniques in it or are you just doing tabby? No, lately I've been doing tabby, but we can talk about other techniques that we can do for sure. You, want, you guys want to like, why don't we do like one special skill? So, what else can we, what else can we do? Well, let's see. We can do something it's called scalloping or twining where we can do we could try it where we could do a shape somewhere and then we can do an outline around the shape. I'm game for that. I actually have never ventured into doing that. So that'll be a new skill for me. Watch Nicole fuck up her crafting on Instagram Live. <laughs> I feel bad for the person. I just saw someone log on to our live and they probably heard me dropping the F-bomb as they're logging on. I love these needles. I get them, I get them in like bulks of a thousand in the warehouse. If anyone wants one, you can DM me at Nicole Snow and I'll send you one. Um, follow me. Like, so we have our darn good yarn here, but my, my Instagram, my personal Instagram is Nicole Snow and you can just hit me up there. I know it's mine because I have just tons of pictures of my daughter. She's the cutest. Well, yeah. so he is, but she's too smart for her own good. She's really smart. <laughs> I can't believe she's, is she three? She's turning four at the end of this month. Okay. Oh. She's really bright. She likes to, I was noticed that she was hiding behind you. She is, but she's When you were on camera, that was so funny. 
I I know she like she she's hit or miss like most of the time I think she's so zoomed out from doing school um oh thank you someone said I love you Nicole you're great if you have any requests for other tutorials I'm your girl too because I have decided to work from home like permanently so I drink my good coffee and do this <laughs> mm, yummy. I love this I love this color so much it makes me so happy yeah I feel like it's like in a good way it's like Miami Vicey like Fort Lauderdale circa late 80s 80s yeah I like that I mean I love anything like vintage 70s or early 80s so yeah I feel like it's like in a good all right way. so do you want to talk about different techniques or are we going to go back and forth and keep doing this well you know do we want to pick it up for for next yeah, week or we <laughs> totally going. and you know the other thing if people are gathering their stash for next week so we intro this and we can continue it and that that's awesome but i would encourage you if you have a stash of small hand dyed yarns the reason i like hand dyed just as you're thinking about what to use i mean you can, again you can use anything but you get this slight little tonal variation and I think it shows up a lot more on these small weaving projects because you watch just do the slight little like ombre-ish fade and then it goes back and I think that that gives it it gives the piece a really like a nice depth and like truly like an artisan look to it yeah but I actually feel like I'm gonna be working on this for the rest of the day while I'm on my 73 other calls anyone else doing like that by oh my god someone said are you from New York Nicole I hear a New York accent <laughs> I am from New Jersey originally. I'm in upstate New York. So if you get me drunk, it's like a really bad Real Housewives episode. <laughs> Good to know. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I am from New Jersey originally. I'm in upstate Yeah, you know, you know I do get, like, you can tell when I get really ticked off when, um, when I start, when the Jersey accent comes flying off, like, I might as well be taking out the earrings like we're ready to go. <laughs> It's bad. So Sarah, can you tell us a little bit while we're working on this. Um, and I promise next week I'm going to have an overhead camera. I have an idea of how I'm going to do this. Yeah, it's um, a little tricky trying to get both going on. You know, it's a first. It's a first go at it for sure. Yeah. I'm afraid if I start moving things. Oh, there we go. So but, and the other um, thing too is I'm messing this up, and I'm okay with that because this really is. You have to Elsa it. You can see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, if we have time, we can start working on a different color. I'm game for that. I don't mind just sitting here weaving. I think people are bouncing on and off. And yeah, I'm getting, kind of what I'm getting though, is I'm, I'm hearing, I'm getting re reverberation. I'm not really sure why. That's strange. If you want to bounce, we can. It's totally up to you. We can do this again next week. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm going to pull this down so you can see. There we go. I'm really liking this peach, and I really don't want to switch colors yet. But you guys just want to like bounce with peach. Yeah, let's see. Actually, my next color is more peachy. I never use peach either. It's strange that we both like went to that place That's strange yeah i know we're both wearing the same it's almost the same color nicole look at that it's like i'm a fiber artist or something i never used peach either so do you want to tell everyone a little bit about like a, a little bit more about your your company and like what yeah, are you so doing what are you going to be offering because you just went full time recently with it yeah i mean this is a very new thing so i appreciate like the opportunity artist, nicole absolutely um, absolutely i've been into Yes, I did full time during, I was furloughed and I've been in the nonprofit industry for over 20 years, giving back. And you know, I always feel like, you know, knitting and weaving and the fiber arts has gotten me through some really hard times. And so when I started to think about, I've always known that I wanted to work for myself, mm -hmm. but I finally realized and I took the time to really find out what my core values are and really is stemmed in everything weaving. Um, 
when you think about the farm to table movement, it's a sustainable movement. And I think that when we're thinking about the clothes we wear, we don't even realize where it comes from. Right. So, so that's really part of my business is that sustainability aspect. I think also too, women are overworked, out. We're taking care of our kids. We're taking care of our parents. We don't have time to socialize. We don't have time to be creative. We have a lot on our plates. So these weaving workshops are a way to unwind, to connect to ourselves again, to get centered, um, to feel whole. And we don't have a lot of time. So these are meant to be really quick exercises, stress relievers. And hey, if you want to get into this even more, then that's great. But my business is designed for really people to get their feet wet. Because weaving, I think, is very complicated. I inherited my mother's loom 10 years ago, and it took me about that long to figure out how to use it. It's very complicated, and I don't think it has to be. So yeah. my company is really about how I can make weaving more accessible to people. I think people and might be really interested. have a lifestyle where I can have more time weaving. I think people would be really interested to know, like, how did you go through, I think, figuring out your personal core values? Well, I took a ton of personality tests. I'm sure people have like Myers-Briggs, or was there one in particular that you You know, I have a lot of different skills. I'm a jack of all trades. I'm not necessarily great at one particular thing, but I do have a lot of individual skills. And weaving is very creative, but it's always, it's also very technical. Um, so I, I did that. I took a lot of quizzes. I, I remember I even hired somebody that helps people figure out what they're good at, what their skills are. Mm -hmm. And I read this book about the Japanese color, uh, culture. It's called Ikigai, where you take what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you believe in and whatever that center is that's your purpose in life and well really, i've never heard of that what is it called it's called ikigai okay how do you spell that oh <laughs> let me look it up oh i-k-i-g-a-i here i'll put it in for any um, japanese i got it So I found, I just did a, um, I did a personality okay. test recently that was awesome. It's called a, uh, the Berkman assessment and man, it was freaking life changing. I was like, oh, cool. This is who I am. Like, I don't feel so bad about who I am anymore. <laughs> it took me a while. Cause I took that, the Briggs awesome. and, um, well, yeah, I did that. Yeah. And then here we are now, weaving. Um, I really like, you know what I really like about, what I really like about. I didn't really gravitate towards one box when I did the Briggs assessment. Did that happen to you, Nicole? No, it didn't. I'm very much who I am, who I am. Um, and most people don't really, like, I am a, actually a complete introvert. Um. And they're like, no, you're not. And I'm like, no, I just play an extrovert on TV because, you know, I have a company. But my happy place is just being in a hole by myself somewhere. <laughs> I completely relate to that. Um, and but I need to find I do need that extrovert. I do need to be social. Yeah, no, I need time to reflect and think about things and all of that. So that was one of the biggest things I took out of the Berkman is like giving myself time to really think through that relates back to my personality, think through decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's been, that's been really transformative for me. Like giving myself the space. Yeah, I think that's really important. And I'm really happy with how this is turning out. 
a lot of times, you know, when I weave and say I, I need to do it, I was actually looking forward to weaving with you today because I've been so busy getting my house ready because I'm going to be moving. Uh huh. And I just haven't been weaving every day. And if I don't do it, I feel really stressed out. So I'm, I'm glad that we're doing that. And I think there's something about it, and I want to do more research on it. Maybe once I do that, we can come back and talk about it. But it does something to your, your mind. It frees you from all the stresses. And, but at the same time, it's productive because there's something about weaving where if you're dealing with an issue, Mm -hmm. and then you come out and you're done with your weaving, then you have a solution. A lot of times that problem is worked out and you didn't even realize it. It's I, I, find that, I find that a lot. I find that, I, I mean, I do a lot of crafts. I do watercolor too. And I get so focused into what I'm doing. It blocks out so much noise. And I find it's when you like release the noise you get answers to like really complex issues. You know, I think it's very similar effect to, you know, athletes and getting into flow and all of that. So this is great. Answers to like really complex issues. Well, here's the deal. I mean, we're heading up on, believe it or not, let me see, 1130. So we're actually heading into almost 45 minutes. Is that right? Wait, what time did we start? It's 11? 11.30, I think. Wow. So yeah, we're actually almost at 45 minutes. So what we can do here is actually sign off. We're going to be back. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday, right? Yeah, we'll come back here at the same time, same place. And we're going to finish these bracelets. I'm going to keep looking on my bracelet when we come back next week. Are you really? I'm going to get You can... You you know, I'm, you know I'm gonna do it Next Wednesday, yeah so BC is uh saying it's such a meditative process and I'm like yeah it's it, it, it is just like everything and I've actually you know one of the other things I've, I'd love to do I've been turning my crafting space into more of a meditative space like I've been introducing incense and candles and like really zenning it out I even um I'm actually really very I've always been very interested in feng shui like even like how my craft room is and like what should be in which corners Ooh. do it all so That's really cool I want to know what that says what is that spiral thing there I go well it's all based off of the compass we'll talk about feng shui next week everyone you have to tune in and we'll talk about how Nicole feng shui is her house and drives everyone crazy because she's always moving furniture around <laughs> this is Wally really Wee. this is great awesome Oh, good. Green Man Drudy's is going to be here next week. That's cool. Awesome. We'll see you then. I'll, we'll, I'll also put this in our highlights as well. So if you want to just go back and watch it or share it, um, you can do that as well. And we will talk to you all later. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Bye.